Been running off a live USB for a while and ready to move on to the next level? In this video, we will look at creating a live boot USB with a persistent partition that allows you to save any changes you make in the live system so that they're still there the next time you boot. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can go beyond memory. Why do you care about a persistent partition on a live USB? Well, for one thing, if you're doing cybersecurity work, you may have a bunch of scripts that you've written to perform live response and incidents response. With a persistent partition, you can now have your scripts along with your forensic distro on that live USB. Let's take a look at how we can build a live boot USB in Windows using the Rufus tool. So first thing we need to do is download the Rufus tool from rufus.ie. So I'm going to go ahead and type that URL into my Edge browser and bring up the Rufus website. Then I'm going to scroll down to the download section and then download the latest version of Rufus. So after it's done, I'm going to go into my downloads folder where the download was placed and then double click on the Rufus executable. So this is what Rufus looks like. The first thing it's going to ask for is to select the USB device that you are going to make into a bootable USB, which in essence it's going to wipe. And I'm going to go ahead and insert my wiped 8 gigabyte USB. And so it sees it, and I'm going to go ahead and select the one and only option. The next step is that it's going to ask you uh, what to load onto here. So I'm going to select the disk or ISO image. And then I'm going to hit the select button and then navigate over to my Kane 12 ISO. That's what I'm going to build. The next step is that it's going to ask me to select the size of the persistent memory. So this tool knows how much space is on your destination USB and then how much space the ISO will take. And then it will give you the option of choosing what's left. So in this particular case, uh, we can choose between one, two, or three gigabytes to be used as our persistent memory partition. So let's go ahead and just choose one gig for this demo. Next is going to ask you for the partitioning scheme of that USB. I'm going to leave it as the default of MBR, but you have the option of selecting GPT as well if you choose. And then after that, it's asking you for the target system. And once again, we're going to choose the default, which in this case is BIOS or UEFI to give us a little more flexibility. And then the last thing that uh, we could choose is the formatting option. And again, I am going to leave it on the default. I'm going to leave the name of the default volume label. And then for the file system, I'm going to leave it as the default of FAT32. And lastly, for cluster size, I am also leaving that to the default of 4K clusters in my particular instance. So once we're ready, we can go and hit the Start button. And then it's going to pop up a panel and give us the opportunity to double check to make sure that the drive you're going to write over, uh, the D colon drive in my case, and you can go ahead and use the disk manager or any other methods to double check to make sure that you are pointing to the correct drive to overwrite. And then once you're okay with that, off it goes. And depending on the size and speed of your USB, this will take a few minutes or so to complete. And once it's done, you will see ready here in the green status bar. And then you can go ahead and hit close to close out Rufus. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and launch Disk Manager to take a look at what our resulting drive looks like. And as you can see here, it's got two partitions. One is the Kane distro itself that it's loaded onto. And then it's also created a one gig persistent partition that we requested. And so everything looks great. I'm going to go ahead and reboot my machine to my newly created live USB. All right, so once my system is rebooted to the USB, right, I've selected the right boot options. Any saved data should remain through any other subsequent reboots. And there's no need to do anything special. I have not done anything special on the boot. 
and the root partition should be persistent. So any changes made in those home folders will remain. So I'm going to go ahead and create a file by typing vi livecapture.sh. So start a new file. And then I'm going to add a few lines in this live capture script. And in this script, we are going to get the system time and date by using the date command. And then we're going to pipe that output to the screen via the T command. And then also write the output to a file in the documents folder called date.txt. And we're going to do a similar thing with the lsusb command to write it out to the screen and into a file into the documents folder called lsusb.txt. And when we're done, I'm going to change the executable bit for this file so we can actually execute and run the script. I'm going to do chmod of a plus x. So basically change mode for everybody. I'm going to add the executable mode for live capture.sh. And now as we run this script, we can see that it runs the date command and then it runs the lsusb command and puts the output to the screen and into the two files. And when it's done, we can do an ls to take a look. And here we definitely do see the file called livecapture.sh. And so now we have created a file here and then also two files in the documents folder. And in a normal live boot USB, when we reboot, those files will be gone. But in this case, because they are in the persistent partition, they should stay there after the reboot. So let's go ahead and show that by doing a reboot of the system. All right, so now we're back from our reboot. Again, back into our live USB running Kane. And if we do an LS to see what's in the current folder, we see the file livecapture.sh that we created before the reboot. And then if we do a ls of documents, we can see the two output files are still there. So this basically proves that the persistence does work for this particular uh, live boot USB. So how does this magic work? Well, one of the things we need to modify in live boot command is to add persistence. So let's take a look at the command line options for our boot. So if we do more of slash proc slash cmd line, you notice that the boot parameter of persistent is present in the kernel options. So this is what keeps the partition active. And if we do sudo disk type of slash dev slash sdb, notice the ext4 partition here with the special volume name of casper-rw, which triggers the OS to treat this partition special. So basically, in the Rufus implementation of persistence, uh, the persistent partition is mounted as the root. So anything that we do in terms of making system level changes or user level changes, those changes persist between boots. By using the Rufus tool on Windows, we are able to create a persistent partition on our Kane Live Boot USB. This is very helpful to be able to keep commonly used scripts on the same USB so that we can use it during our digital forensics and incident response work. For more videos on the Kane distro, see these videos here. For more videos on the Linux command line, make sure you watch these videos here. Make sure you click the blue monkey to subscribe Thanks for your time and happy hunting.